to uh, Beata Campman. She's director of the Vaccine Centre in London. Thanks for being with us on the programme. Just tell us, first of all, why it's so useful, if you like, to see all these vaccines listed uh, like they are together on this tool. Yeah, good morning and thank you for inviting me on the program. So we put up this vaccine tracker to really show the development of the preclinical vaccine candidates all the way through to what hopefully will be a safe and effective vaccine and against coronavirus in the future. So um, it is important for people to understand that vaccines don't just get developed overnight and there is a lengthy process. And the time when it gets really more interesting is when the candidates move from what we call the laboratory or preclinical phase to the human trials. And very few of those, as you say, over 200 candidates have made that step so far, and many, many will not make it. But what's important is, is the ones that are coming through and how we're going to assess them. Yeah, as you say, it's important to, to be able to see what stage they're at. And of course, what we're really hoping for is that they'll further uh, get down that route so that something might be ready sooner rather than later. What are your hopes? Yeah, so we know that uh, about two candidates are now going into phase three, which is the phase where we can really see whether the vaccine is not only safe, but also protects from the disease that we want to protect against, because there are many steps in vaccine development. You need to have a credible construct that uh, induces the right kind of immune response, but it's also not giving any side effects. And by the end of the day, we need to prove that the people who've been vaccinated are really protected against the disease. And that takes some time. And it is really quite astonishing how far the process has come in this very short period since January. And already in April, we had the first candidates going into humans. And that's progressed further over the summer, although the phase three trials require really a lot of people and also in a setting where unfortunately there's still a lot of coronavirus going around because a part of the people in the trial will get the vaccine and the other part will get either an alternative or no vaccine. And then the proof of the pudding is whether the ones who got the vaccine have significantly less disease or hopefully no disease at all. And the best case scenario is then that they can't transmit to others in society. And those vaccines that you mentioned there are that are at the top of the list, if you rise, like, I mean, what um, stage uh, are they at now? When do you think we might move into uh, some kind of uh, process where they might be produced and then, of course, distributed? Sure. So um, we have uh, uh, a couple of vaccines. Well, there's a vaccine from China already licensed for use in the military. That's obviously a vaccine that's only been assessed in a very small group of people, and it doesn't have a, a, the kind of license that we would want to see. We have the vaccine from Moderna that is going into phase three trials, I believe, today, and the vaccine from uh, the Oxford group that has uh, started phase two, phase three trials. So these are the most advanced candidates. If these trials go really, really well, then um, the results might be available in the autumn, but that doesn't mean it's coming to a vial anywhere or a syringe anywhere near us uh, soon. So then the production will have to, well, first of all, the license will have to be obtained after uh, negotiations with what's called the regulators, who are the people who need to make sure the vaccines are safe and fulfill their profile. Once that's achieved, the companies will then rev up the production. And in fact, there are already uh, preparations being made for this. This is quite unique that people have already, you know, bought millions of doses for a product that nobody knows whether it will succeed. So there's a great deal of risk, but there's also a great deal of saving time for not waiting until finally everything is through and then the vaccine gets produ produced because that will cause months and months of delay. So hopefully by sometime next year, I think, we will have vaccines that will be more widely available, but probably not for the world. So first of all, we need to give the vaccines to people who are the most vulnerable. And those are the people who have the most severe consequences from the disease and possibly also the healthcare workers because they're very exposed. Beata Campman, Director of the Vaccine Centre in London, thanks for being with us on the programme today.